um, this is your image pipeline tuning introduction. So camera ISP pipeline refers to the algorithm and technique used to convert the raw image data captured by the camera sensor into the visually pleasing and accurate final image. So <clears throat> um, as I told you, I will be uh, making another separate course on this image pipeline tuning. So I just wanted to give you a heads up about this. Uh, so this is the basic pipeline of uh, ISP. So uh, there's another, this is very simplified form. There's a whole lot of things which goes inside the ISPs. There's a whole lot of algorithm, whole lot of tuning and like thousands of parameters are there. But this is a simplified, a basic, very basic uh, pipeline diagram, which I've tried to show you like what, what all happens. But again, I'll be making a separate course on that uh, because it's, okay, it's, it's, a, it's a very big topic to cover over here. So uh, starting from this is a uh, bare order pattern and we need to do the black level adjustment, uh, noise level, noise reductions, and some white balance in the bare domain itself. So uh, there are a lot of things we need to be explained inside each and every block. For example, why we need the black label, what happens in the black label, why exactly we need, uh, how to capture the raw images for the black label. So each and every stage, you need to have different raw files. There are some specific rules set of conditions you need to follow while capturing the raw image for the different ISP blocks. So I'll be talking more about that uh, in, a, in a separate course because it's a very big topic and it is going to take a lot of time uh, to understand and to, to deliver this course. This uh, color filter array interpolation. So, and this uh, RGB blending happens then you need to do the gamma correction curve if you're not doing gamma correction, it will be uh, difficult for your camera to identify the colors and some RGB to YCC conversions so that you can, you can perform your uh, sharpness tuning, edge enhancement and contrast. And there's some false color uh, suppression. So false chroma color is the, the another model. So this is very high level diagram. <clears throat> I'll be uh, making one another separate course for uh, uh, on this. So the, uh, here uh, I'll try to show uh, some of the image quality measurement using some of the standard charts. So basically, uh, which I have not covered in my previous session. So in my previous session, I have covered for the uh, CCM chart only and some ISO one double two double three chart, but here I'll be taking example of more number of charts. <clears throat> so first chart I have taken is a spilled coin chart. So spilled coin chart is used to measure the uh, texture. So how much texture a camera can produce? This can be measured using the spilled coin chart. So. <clears throat> this chart has a circle of different size of colors uh, arranged randomly. So you can see that the different circles over here, so it looks like a coin. So that's why it's called it the coin, but it is spilled over there. So it's called a spilled coin chart. You can relate with the name itself. <clears throat> now the IMA test has an algorithm which can identify each circle location and size, and it compares the circle to their expected values and generate the matrix. So let's look at the matrix. And before that, uh, it comes in the two versions. One is the black and white and another, and another is a color one. So it, some there are some basic differences in that. So mostly we use the black and white one as only. So color has a, some advantage, but it's not, it's not really required. If it again depends on the, your use case of your camera. So if, if it demands, the use case demands, you can choose the color color is spilled coin as well. Once you do the measurement, uh, uh, you need to look at the equitance values. So the equitance values over, comes over here in the graph and lower is the best. So some values from the IMATS output, higher is the best, some values lower is the best. I will show you uh, how to measure it uh, uh, after a few minutes. So just be there. Uh, I'll show you how to measure it and how to select 
and how to select the roi and what is the meaning of those things so because the this particular chart has a different uh, different components the center components and this components this four quad sfr quadrant components so i'll tell you how to measure and how to select the roi after a couple of minutes okay now the next we will have a sfr plus chart so the sfr plus chart can be used for the different purpose so first i'll tell you it is available in the two variant one is 5 is to 7 and uh, one is another is 5 is to 9 so i'm telling when i'm telling 5 is to 7 means uh, 1 2 3 4 5 five boxes uh, <clears throat> vertical 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 seven boxes horizontal if your camera have a big fov then you can go for 5 by 5 by 9 also but for this example uh, i have taken 5 is to 7 image to make you understand the use case of sfr plus chart because uh, iso 1233 chart is uh, outdated right now uh, it is not recommended to use those charts by the industry standard so imrtest doesn't recommend right now to use the iso 1233 chart so now it is recommended to use the sfr plus chart to have a better uh better image quality measurement so these are the tests which you can perform using sfr chart like noise iso sensitivity color accuracy um you can you can uh, right now you, the, the, there's no color part but instead of this uh, circle uh, and you can choose a different version where uh, you will get the color information where you will get the small color chart over here so you can do the color accuracy measurement as well uh, if you want to do the texture you can you can resolution texture can be done from this chart distortion also can be covered uh, through these these corner patches resolution sharpness and gamma can be done with this particular box with these particular charts so a lot of things a lot of testing you can perform on this one single chart so that's why it is recommended to buy this chart directly to perform all these test cases instead of buying iso 1233 chart and once you uh, execute this you will get some output something like this so you need to look for the mtf 50 values uh, in, in any of the unit, either cycle per pixel or LWPH. And also you need to look for the <clears throat> 10 to 90% raise method. <coughs> so uh, I'll explain a little bit what is 10 to 90%. When the there's a transition between complete black to complete white. So how much pixel it is taking in the transition from complete black to complete white. So that's why it is called 10 to 90 percent raise method so lowest is the best lowest is the best because if it is taking less number of pixels which means you have a better sharpness so right now you can select any of the edges but if you go to the ima test uh, there are automated method as well which can automatically detect all the horizontal or vertical edges of all the patches so it can give you the uh, mtf values that each horizontal and vertical patch of uh, each boxes so that's why it is recommended so that you can compare the mtf value from the center and from the corner areas so that you can check if there is any uh, focus issue or is there any planarity issues in your cameras so it is always recommended to use this chart instead of iso one double two double three because here you can verify a lot of things like focus also you can verify i'll be uh i'll be uh telling more about this once we will be executing uh, in the IMATIS master tool. And next one is uh, SG chart. So it's a color S, uh, color checker SG chart. Uh, SG means semi-gloss. This is the full form of SG. So you can do the measurement through the 24 patch color chart as well. But it is also recommended to use the SG chart for the measurement because here you have a 140 patches in standard color checker you have a 24 patches but here you have a 140 patches which gives you a uh, flexibility to measure your camera accuracy camera color accuracy for the wide range of color so that you will be more sure about these things 
So you can see uh, it has a 140 array of 140 colors, 24 patches from original color checker chart. So that is directly taken. 17 step gray scale. In 24 color patch chart, you have a six gray scale. Here you will get a 17. So you'll have a better understanding about your gamma curve and auto white balance accuracy. And 14 unique skin tone in color checker chart, you will have a two only two patches for the skin color tone, but here, here you have a 14 unique skin tone colors. So you will have a better understanding about the how the camera is going to capture your uh, human skin tones. So uh, I'll, I'll be explaining how to select this chart. There's another settings you need to do in the IMA test to select this chart because by default it takes 24 patch color chart only. So I'll tell you uh, in a couple of minutes. And there are, uh, uh, this is HDR chart. Sorry about that. This is not dot pattern chart. You can, uh, you can we, we just need to understand this is for the dynamic range calculation. So <clears throat> ITR36 uh, is the chart name uh, from, from the IMA test. Uh, and on top of this, we put the ma dark mask world over here so that it has a 36 different patches over here from the, these are the darkest part, these are the brightest part. So we need to measure using these charts for HDR dynamic range. Uh, so dynamic range is basically your ratio of information from the brightest part of the image to the information from the darkest part of the image. So this is the simple definition of SDR. That's why we are choosing brightest part and the darkest part. And these, if you count these all are 36 patches, you can't see in this particular image over here because this is uh, underexposed image. So you can't really see, but it's, but but he, uh, I'm telling you like uh, this has a 36 uh, patch over here. And once you, you execute those uh, through the IMA test, you'll get this kind of outputs. So you will get slope based dynamic range as well. But right now it is not recommended due to some some certain limitation from the IMATIS. So it, it is not recommended because um, it is very easy to manipulate those values. So slow based is not recommended. So whatever it is recommended here, the values which comes into the pink, the middle values. So these values can be taken as a uh, your dynamic range output. You will also see your uh, SNR values over here. R, G, B, Y values. So you can take this, uh, the SNR values measurement and your gamma values can be uh, seen over here. So multiple chart can give you multiple outputs. It's depend on your use case and your requirement, which chart you want to use. Uh, <clears throat> again, it's de depend on your design of your camera and expected output from your camera in terms of image quality. So there are a whole lot of factors involved in this. So you need to be very careful while choosing the charts and uh, executing the uh, camera IQ tests.